All right, guys. Welcome to the Not For Hire YouTube channel. Today we're back here with Jelly Green. And uh, we're going to get a run in today. At least I hope so. But first thing we're going to do, drain all the fuel out of these tanks. I've been keeping this one covered up. Fish, it's still only been about four days since I got this thing home. Well, probably a little more than that. About a week. I don't know if you can see that in there. Might have to get a flashlight. Hold on. First, let's see, uh, see how much is actually in here. I don't know which end to dip. I guess this one. It says uh, eighth of a tank on the on the gauge on the dash, so. Uh, oof, there's a lot in there. It's right... I don't know, not that much. Right here. So, about... Yeah, that's about right, I would say. About a quarter tank. But this is the main feed tank, I believe. That one over there is a return tank and uh, has a feed underneath. The feed's underneath, and there's a valve. You see the valve? But you can't close it, because it hits the tank, so. Not sure what to do there. I could just spin it, I think, and it'll close, but. All right, I gotta find something to put all this diesel in. Or I might just close the valve so that way I don't have to drain that one and then just open this one. But then it's, oh, and then I'll return it into a bucket. That's what, yeah, okay, perfect. My neighbor's mowing the lawn, so I'm just gonna raise the cab and we'll get to it. All right, got the cab jacked up. I got the safety on. I'm gonna uh, see if I can get this top loose. I don't want to go too crazy, but it won't loosen by hand. Oh, okay, that was easy. Oh, there it goes. It's dry. At least it looks dry. Twist and pull to remove. Oops, yeah. O ring. Let's take that out, put that right here, just in case. Genuine Ractor 2020. I think that was just changed. I think that's the date, or does that just happen to be the model number? Hmm. Ooh. No, well, I mean, overall. Yeah, I mean, it's bone dry. So, oh, I guess I'll just put that bag in there because I don't know. This side's not flowing very well. Maybe because the cap's off? It should be breathing though. I don't know. Let me go take the cap off. Taking the cap off didn't make a difference, so I'm gonna assume that it's got a lot of a lot of smeg in there in the bottom of the tank, so I'm gonna take the hose off at that end. But I'm gonna drain this tank out first, because this is the one I'm gonna use to start the truck, so. We'll let this one drain, let the other one drain out. <laughs> Yummy. How'd you get in that crap in your injection pump? 
Beautiful. My neighbor just came over and brought me some barrels. He's got a waste oil burner in his shop, which makes me pretty jealous, but I got <laughs> everything is full. All my containers are just full of diesel fuel, so this is good. And I still got more coming out, so I guess there's a lot of diesel in there. <laughs> a lot more than I thought. Finally. You can see down in there, if you can, it is very, uh, it's got like a little bit of sludge on the whole coating, or a whole coating of sludge around the whole bottom, probably about four inches up. That's the the hole for the, that's the peacock right there on the tank, right in front of us. So, it's hard to see. Stupid light's so big, can't see nothing but. It's pretty nasty. There you go, I took the flashlight out, or I took the sending unit out for the fuel gauge, and I put the flashlight in there so you could see inside. And then I took the shot back, and I sucked out all the sludge, and then threw a towel in there, and I didn't take this old broom handle, and I've been moving it around and cleaning it out. Looks like it's pretty good. So, I mean, that's that's the intake for the the hose for the petcock, and this is a uh, the drain for the tank. Even though it won't come out, but at least it's there. You can see it at least. Um, other than that, I'd say it's fairly clean, as clean as it's gonna get without putting stuff in there. I don't really know what to clean the tank with. I mean, clean diesel is probably the best stuff. I might just have to change the filters in a little while because the fresh diesel should probably clean that right up. And I'll just keep an eye on it and then uh, change the filters or change the, fil the fuel filter on it. All right. Next thing I do is take off this uh, elbow. Uh, when I started it, I took the elbow off right there, or tried starting it. I took the elbow off there, and I was spraying ether in, as you guys saw me doing it. Um, that's not the proper way. I was going to put a block. I had the flat piece of wood, and I was going to put it over that end in case something happened. But really, it probably wouldn't do anything. It might even suck in a rubber boot if it was running away. So I'm not really sure. But the proper way is to take it off here, and then I'll show you from there. What the hell is it? <laughs> uh oh. It's seized. Yeah, it's stuck. Oh, shit. Okay, well, <clears throat> this turbo is definitely seized. And I don't want to put a wrench or anything on it, but first thing I'm going to do, well, I don't know anything about turbos, but. I do know this is the oil feed line, so I'm going to heat this up, try to get this fitting off, and then I'm going to pump oil into it, and then maybe if I let it sit overnight, this might, uh, maybe it'll spin. I don't know where it's seized. I don't know if it's in here or if it's in here. Ooh. Nope. All right, got it off. I'm going to use my little oil can. And I'm gonna squirt some oil down there. Ooh. Doesn't seem to be draining. Or does it have to? I don't really know how the turbo works. I don't know if it has to spin for it to come back out or what. Hmm. 
I'll let it sit for a while and see what happens. <clears throat> I'd say little to no play at all in that shaft, but I got it loose. Just took a, I just filled that up with oil, like I was showed you there, and then I just kept wiggling it back and forth by hand, and then it just came loose. So I'd say it's good for now. I don't really trust it now that it was stuck, but this is, if you could see it, remanufactured. So. Should be good, at least for a little while. If it starts to smoke though, then we know. I don't want it to run away, that's what I'm really worried about. But that block of wood, let's see. Should, yeah, it's definitely gonna work. All right, now we got that part done, jeez. Just wanna start this thing. <laughs> we started this morning, and now it's like, uh, you know what time it is five o'clock in the afternoon i started this at like 10 o'clock and i still haven't even heard this thing turn over um i got extra batteries too so i'm hoping it'll have enough power so let's see here the water so that's good. Smells good too. Okay. Okay, now I'm working on this side of the truck. I'm gonna take the filter off. I'm gonna take the filter cover off and then take the filter out. And then match this up with the new one hopefully wrong filter looks nice though but this is the part number 2020 is the part number and this is what they gave me and it doesn't even come close to fitting over fitting over that rod there i mean it's just i mean i I've tried shoving it on there and it just will not go so it's definitely not gonna work and I would use this one but watch <laughs> I mean it's like like it's an oil filter it's nasty so as much as it kills me to not be able to start this thing I don't want to get this far and mess it up especially after cleaning the tank because that took a lot <laughs> But, okay, back off to Napa. Okay, so next day, finally got a filter. Napa didn't have it, I had to go to Fleet Pride, but it's okay, at least I got it. So now, take the new filter, slip it down over the feed line here and put the new o-ring or whatever this is over it gasket okay and then I'm gonna uh, fill this up with diesel so I can prime it and then I'm gonna uh, I took the cap off yesterday but take this out fill this up with diesel fuel and a little bit of transmission oil and this is going to be diesel oil and a little bit of transmission oil just to help the cylinders lube up when it first sprays in at least that, that's what i was told to do so it sounds right and uh i think it'll appreciate it <laughs> appreciate a little oil in, its, in the cylinders so oh yes i was just about to give up Okay. All right, got her all filled up with fuel there. Um, can't even see the transmission fluid, but there is transmission fluid in there. 
Um, and I filled up the pump also with transmission fluid and diesel. So she should, if she turns over, she should fire up. At least I freaking hope so. <laughs> For all this. But hey, at least we're doing it right. You gotta do it right. If you're gonna do it, because if you do it wrong, I'm just gonna be doing it again. So I'd rather do it once. Next thing I'm doing here is uh, pulling off the oil filter and we're going to take a good look at it and see if it's, oh, I have a new one. I'm going to change one and then I actually, this filter down here, it says screw on bypass lube filter. I They were looking this up at Napa and it, nobody could seem to find this and it came up as a canister. So I'm not sure what the deal is with this side, but I'm going to change out this one and I'm going to open it up. And if it's all deteriorated on the inside, then I'm going to change. I'm going to go try to find this one. Originally, I thought it was two of these, so I bought two of these, but it's not. I mean, I don't think it is. Maybe it's the same inside, but it's definitely two different filters for sure. So I don't know. I'm going to unscrew it and see if there's any oil in it. I already loosened it up, so. Okay, it is full of oil, so. Um, it's pretty rusty, so I should probably just change it. And I have a gallon of 1540 down there. And I'll just fill up the, the one filter. Hopefully, the, oh man, I think this is a housing for the oil too. That's going to be a lot of oil. Maybe I should just leave it in there. Uh, see, the problem I'm having is I just want to start this. And if it starts, I'm going to drain everything. And if it runs good, I'm going to just go drain the oil and everything. You saw me uh, pull off the oil plug and check the oil to see if there's any water in the bottom, and there wasn't. And then I just pulled off the oil filter, started to unscrew it, and the oil is coming out of it. So it's full. Hmm. A dilemma here now and according to the service it's still good the oil is still good even though it's not it's, it needs to be changed before it leaves this yard but <sighs> all right i uh there's a mouse nest in there so i'm gonna suck it out with the vacuum the best i can i see a gasket or something hanging out it's making me nervous Is that a clutch, clutch brake gasket or something? What the hell is that? Just gonna check the transmission fluid to make sure it's clean. And not overflowing. If it flows out of here a lot, and then it's probably got water in it. Uh oh. Did fall out a little bit. Let's uh is there a train plug on this thing somewhere? Alright, I'm going to pull that drain plug and see if any water comes out. Oh, I already feel water.
Okay, there uh, wasn't much in there, so and I probably only took out half a quart, so it was just a little bit of water in the bottom. I'm going to leave it for right now, and then we'll just see if it starts up, and then first thing I do, we'll change engine, transmission, and then we'll go rear ends, so that way, before anything gets put in gear, this thing will be all new fluids. So... At least I got the water out first. If not, I would have pumped it all through it. And yeah, it would have been fine, but it would have turned into, you know, that white milky crap probably. So at least it's out before that happened. All right. So I ended up taking the wheel off because it's just a lot easier. My arms aren't that long and I can't really reach from, I mean, you can see, the farthest reach I got with, if you put the tire on, is not even close. Like I can't even touch the frame. So I took the wheel off. Now I can get right up in here. Even though if this thing was running away, that would be pretty scary to be climbing up in a wheel well. But there's really no way to tilt the cab and start it confidently. I mean, I, I don't like the standing on the ground while hitting the starter. I mean, but all right, guys, I think we're uh, ready for a start. I tried to order this. I tried to get this hose today, too. The supply line for the turbo and nobody had it in stock of course not even fleet pride they couldn't even find it they told me to go on amazon and buy one which is just not what you want to hear oh wait i gotta put the return bottle i disconnected the return hose and i got a bottle for it what did i do with it over there I set this up I set this up i gotta get some blocks and set it up so it can put the hose in it then we'll see what comes out of the injection system all right. everything out of our way in case we gotta run like hell oh. and then uh what's next oh yeah Let's see got my return line set up oh and uh as far as the batteries go you're probably wondering how come you didn't put a starter on it yet well what i'm gonna end up what i ended up doing is getting another battery i think think I finally got this figured out well both the positives go to the starter the back of the starter for both sets of wires so this is how I did it I did one with the terminals on one battery with terminals and I did the other two linked together 12 volts um, and so now those are separated from this and it's an extra battery so I mean, if it doesn't turn over with this, I mean, I, I don't know what to tell you. These are out of my, but that's out of my bulldozer, and those two are brand new. So, okay, I'm freaking terrified. I'm not gonna lie to you, but here goes nothing. Turns out the starter's gonna be a real pain to get out, so I'm heating it up and uh, or heating up the bolt on one is completely seized, so I'm heating up the starter itself and the bolt, and I figure the aluminum will suck up the heat from that, and maybe I can get it to turn. If not, I'm gonna just cut the head off because I got the other two out, so. We'll, uh, we'll see what happens. Okay. I got the bolts out of the starter. Well, except for one. I had to torch it. So now I got a stud I got to worry about. So, that's going to be fun. But, two out of three ain't bad. This is a nightmare. <laughs> I've been at this all morning. The bolts were really, really stuck. I mean, the, the water, like, basically, I mean, the, the weather can get, like, right here. So, it just wreaked havoc on that, on the bolts and stuff. But, we'll fix it. I'll weld the nut on there or something. And hopefully, be able to extract it. Right, I'm going to get it pulled out of there now. Okay, got it out. 
That was not fun. Imagine changing that on the side of the highway. <laughs> That's why I wanted to take it out here and replace it. Now I'll know what I have. And if I gotta take it out again, I know I expect it to come out instead of like it what it did. So now I got a little bit of work to do. I'm Hopefully I can get that stud out. If not, oh man, I don't know what I'm going to do. Hopefully behind that plate, hopefully behind this plate right here is hollow. You know, it's the backside. And then I can always drill through it and tap it again. But that is not going to be fun. Oh yeah, this we need to talk about. All rotted there. And this is the worst part because this is the discharge that goes into the intake of the engine look at it completely rotted out so if I didn't take this off or notice this hole I actually noticed this hole first if I didn't take this off the turbo would have sucked all that up so maybe you guys can tell me where I can get one of these I was gonna fix it I was I only noticed this at first and I was just gonna fix it but this is this is pretty bad so, I don't know. What I just found. This is ground. Oh, holy crap. Did I just do this with the torch? No, there's no way. Wow. That is not good. So I'm going to say the starter is probably good, and it's probably those wires. So what I'm going to do is try to get these drain, or I think these are the oil um, ports for the bearings. I'm going to try to get those. There's one there, and there's another one somewhere right here. Can you see it? Try to get these uh, these ports out. I doubt it, but I'll try. Try to get some oil into it. I'll lube it up, maybe take the solenoid off and see if I can lube that up. Lube up this end. And I'll probably just throw this back in for now. Okay, I got that metal plate off. I'm gonna peel off this gasket and see what's underneath it. Oh, don't want to mess it up, but you know, there's no way it's going to come off in one piece, so... Nothing too scary, I don't think. She needs to be cleaned up. I got some electrical parts cleaner, I think. Good old torches. Got them both out. I didn't think that, that would happen at all, so... Very happy. Hopefully I have new set screws. Or uh, new plugs, so I don't have to put these old ones back in. Adjustment. Nice. People want to know what was in there. I already broke one of the camera lenses on this phone, so I gotta get a new phone already. 
Cool. I'll lube that up now. Okay. Got the uh, terminals all cleaned up. And I'm just going to give it a quick coat of paint. And then we'll... Uh, I'm just going to silicone this shut and then no-seize the bolts um, going into this and then take the oil things back out and no-seize them, put a couple drips of oil in them, put them back in. Um, unfortunately, the set screws I have don't fit, so kind of sucks. But, yeah, it'd be nice if they came out, then I can maintenance it regular. That'd be, that'd be cool. But... Oh well. All right, let's get the paint. There you go, remanufactured. <laughs> All right, I took the rotted air cleaner off so I can actually get a lot more room. And I got, let's see if I can see it better here. I have a nut th actually threaded on the, um, the broken stud. This is the bolt that holds the starter in. It's on the actual threads of the stud. Um, I just ground on the end and then actually threaded the nut on. All right, I got the torches, welder, and my generator running because this is way too far away from any of the buildings to weld. And I don't want to put the tire back on and everything to do it. But what I'm really hoping is that the threads, you know, locking the nut, the threads are there, so it shouldn't, I and mean, unless it pops off, it can't, you know, unless the, the weld breaks, it can't spin off. So either the brakes, the bolt's going to break or it's going to come off. So there we go. It's not the best because it's off the generator, but it might work. I'm going to try taking it off now. First one didn't work, so try again. Third time's a charm. See, the problem was these ones were too small, and I didn't have enough area on the inside to weld to the to the stud or to the broken nut or bolt. So that was uh, the only way to get it was a really big nut, and then weld the crap out of it, and then it finally did it, and it backed out. Okay. Got our reconditioned starter in. Mmm, those are good wires. Put a grade 5 bolt in the one that was broken. Oh, forgot this ground strap. It's not done. I have to put the ground strap on, and then I got the other set of cables that were hooked up here. And I got the battery charging. And then I'm going to, uh, see how it turns over now now that all that crap is gone and the starter is a little more lubed up and refreshed 
we'll uh, charge this up. <clears throat> I'm going to pick up all these tools and lower the cab and see if she whirls over. Okay. I did put a strap on this too. As you guys said that the cab could fall forward, like actually fall forward, so I put a strap from there to the to the stack support. Uh here we go, Jelly Green attempt number 16. Alright guys, <laughs> it started. Uh, I shut the key off and it didn't shut off, or at least maybe it did, but it took a while, so I'm, I'm really afraid to turn it back on. <laughs> uh, I'm assuming it just ran out of fuel and it doesn't suck up in the tank yet. I don't know what to do here. Alright, let's see if I can get it to longer, run longer than a few seconds. Getting fuel out of here, and then when I plug that up, <laughs> get basically no fuel out of that back hole where the shut off solenoid goes. So, not sure what that means. That's how it feels supposed to flow out of there. That's better. Man, it turns out I think what it was was a blockage. I mean, I blew it out twice, but I think a blockage was between the screen and the governor system. And then the last time I blew it out, I think I finally got it out. And this thing fired right up. So, oh, man, am I glad that's over. Jeez. All right, let's, uh, hmm. I really like to see the oil pressure. So before I start it again, I'm going to put the cab down and see if we got oil pressure.
freaking beast. I shut it off or ran out of fuel, but. Whoo! All right, I gotta take off this uh, this fuel separator and everything. So I think we'll save it for the next for the next. Oh, that's the airline. We'll save it for the next video. <laughs> oh man, I'm so excited! It was only running about only running a few seconds or a lot a minute now. Still there, fast. So, you know, the compressor's good. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this part of the Jolly Green Giant cab over. Um, just want to give a huge shout out to JC Smith Projects here on YouTube. Uh, I annoyed the crap out of him, and he, <laughs> he kept answering me, and he really helped me out a lot with this project, getting it started and everything. So, uh, go follow him if, if you aren't already, which I'm sure he is, So I'm sure you are. Also, um, shout out to a couple of other YouTube channels. Twin Stick Garage, he uh, actually gave us a follow. Uh, Bubbles 8V92, he gave us a follow. Uh, I know you guys recommended Gentry and, Shun Gent Gentry and Sons, um, but I ha actually already subscribed to him. Um, I love watching Tim and Braxton going out there and getting in the trucks and raising all kinds of hell. It's a good time. Uh, and one of my personal favorites right now, uh, since I got this truck, I just subscribed to him, uh, FSC Speed Shop, Stephen Orwell. I love watching Orwell go down the road and do good, honest work. And uh, Steve seems like a really good guy, and he seems like a lot of fun. But uh, So, yeah, go give, go give those channels a... A follow they have a lot more subscribers for me all of them than me so I they don't need my <laughs> they don't need my endorsement but just really good channels uh, of guys that actually get stuff done and let's see uh, oh yeah don't f uh, don't forget to go check out not for hire square body.com get yourself some cool stickers even though there's not much left not many left but uh, don't forget you can follow me on Instagram not for hire square body uh, and Facebook also, not for higher square body. Uh, oh, also, I want to thank all the old timers down below for telling me all the good stories they got of driving these old cab cab overs across the country. Uh, I think that's really cool. So, if you guys want to leave your your stories down below of cab overs, I really like reading them. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm going to start making memories of mine, but I like hearing your guys' memories too. So, uh, also. Uh, Shout out to all the new subscribers. This is, you know, this series is really taken off. And what I realized is, is that cab overs just aren't big here. They're big all over the world. And there's people watching from everywhere. Uh, Australia, New Zealand, Ireland, South Africa, Russia, the Middle East. Literally all over the world. I mean, it, it's incredible that, that people everywhere, we all speak the same language when it comes to trucks. And we think that they're awesome. So uh, I want to give a big shout out to those people too. And... I know uh, some of you are going to be a little upset that I didn't drain the oil out of it at first, but, you know, <laughs> it'll be fine. I'm not going to touch this truck now. I'm just going to drain everything out, put all new fluids in. So next episode, that's what we'll be doing. We'll, and we'll get in some other stuff, too. Also, uh, the wheel, too. Twin Stick Garage is actually going to is going to uh, take that wheel. So i got to figure out a way to ship it to Canada, but that is going to happen. So uh, thank you guys for telling me to get in contact with them. And... That's all going to work out great. But, all right, guys, leave a comment down below. Tell me what you think. Hit like if you liked the Jolly Green Giant cab over truck. And uh, as always, guys, thanks for watching.